Alright, I had somebody request that I hurry up with this, so I'm going to make a video about my my Nintendo 64 and PlayStation life. So, I left off with my my life with Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Um, and the last, you know, the last, I was at the last big hurrah of that system was Chrono Trigger, which continues to be one of my most favorite games in the entire world ever and for the history of mankind, whatever. Um, anyway, Q the next gen systems um, because of the during the previous consoles there had been the large console wars you know in Nintendo versus Sega I was fiercely in the uh, the Nintendo camp so when the next gen consoles came out I remember that during Christmas or something um, I, I remember I don't think the stores do this anymore but I you could actually rent the console and rent a couple games to go with it. So my brother and I rented a Nintendo 64 for the weekend or something, and um, with Mario 64, I gotta say, um, as far as the Nintendo 64 goes, Mario 64 was probably one of the best games developed for that platform, um, just hands down. Um, I'll get into that later, but um, we we pretty much fell in love with Mario 64, and we're like, wow, that's really great. Um, I remember though it was Christmas time and I think I don't remember exactly but I think my grandparents were visiting and like my grandfather as far as I know had like never touched a video game in his life but um he like he was really into like Mario 64 but only one very particular feature about this game is the fact that in the underwater levels Mario has limited breath capacity and you know if you run out he dies my grandfather found out that you could drown mario and he kept doing it like over and over again and he was like ah i keep killing him ha 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 he's drowning it was kind of disturbing <laughs> like i can how i don't remember exactly how old i was maybe 14 Maybe, yeah, must have been 14. Um, I don't remember. Had to have been 14, yeah. So, um, I was just like, okay. Um, but anyway, my brother and I were like, yeah, Mario 64 is a really great game. And, you know, we've been reading our EGMs and we we're like, okay, so, uh, you know, the Nintendo 64, obviously 64 bit, and then the PlayStation, as far as we understood, was 32 bit. So, more bits are better. So, once again, as a joint birthday present, we, we, we asked, like, oh, we really want a Nintendo 64, uh, so, once, I think I mentioned one of my other videos, my brother, my brother and, my brother's and my birthday are literally pretty much in the same week, they're eight days apart, so, like, um, we often did, like, the joint birthday present thing to get, like, we got something better, so, we got that, and at first, like, I was, I was in love with the system, I was a little bit, like, iffy with the huge controller. I was like, Rrr. um, and like the C buttons. I'm not, a, I, I was never, and I'm still not a fan of the C buttons, but except you're, if you're playing Ocarina of Time. Um, but yeah, like at first I really liked the system, but as time went on and you know, we got the news that Final Fantasy VII was not going to be developed for the Nintendo 64 because of just just hard or you know hardware and software limitations and stuff like it would have taken like 80 gazillion cartridges to produce Final Fantasy 7 uh, because of all of the pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff um, I started to kind of regret the fact that we got a Nintendo and I was like oh you know you know Square's going you know they chose PlayStation as a platform so I was like and Square was the major company of games that I liked and I was like all right well we'll see and I remember like Oh, well, I'll try to play an RPG for N64. And I remember I picked up Quest 64. Oh my god, what a drain on my life that was. It was just a really terrible game. And I like I just re I just like felt worse and worse as I played that. Um granted, we I mean, there there were some really good games for Nintendo 64. I this is really strange. I was a huge fan of Star Fox, but for some reason I never picked up Star, Bo Star Fox 64. I don't know why. I really don't know why, and I've actually never played it. And 
I probably should have because I heard I hear it's a great game. I never did. Um, but you know, we played Mario Kart 64, and obviously, Ocarina of Time was the coolest game and probably the best game for that platform. Period, and still one of my favorite games. Fucking love Ocarina of Time. Um, I have Majora's Mask, but I actually have haven't played it yet. I have a bad habit of purchasing games and then not playing them for like 20 years. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to think like what what else were we really into? GoldenEye was a great game. Um, obviously Mario Kart 64. I didn't pick that up until like years and years and years and years later, but like my friends had it and stuff. Um, but to be honest, I would say by the time I was in ninth grade, I was just like, uh... I really was not feeling it. I just, I felt like the games that were, oh, Bomberman 64 was good, and then Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy Kong Racing, I hate to be this way, really trumped Mario Kart 64. Diddy Kong Racing kicked ass, because you could choose, like, the different hovercrafts and, like, go-karts and stuff, and I was just like, that is the coolest thing ever. Um, I'm trying to think of any other, like, Nintendo 64 games, which I absolutely love. I love Bomberman 64. Diddy Kong Racing, I never picked up Banjo-Kazooie, I've never even actually played it, I hear it's a great game. But uh, anyway, around the beginning of my ninth grade year, like, something really unusual happened. Um, I thought it was really strange, I, I was like the weekend or something, and I was sleeping in as I usually did, and my brother busts into my bedroom, he's like, wake up, we're gonna go get a PlayStation, and I was like, Who's gonna get a PlayStation? You don't have money, I don't have money. Where's this PlayStation coming from? And apparently, like, my 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 dad or something was having a really good day, and he was just like, okay, kids, I'm gonna buy you a PlayStation. And we were just like... Because that, I don't know, that just was not standard behavior in our family. But hey, why the hell not? So <laughs> it was so random. So, like, we went to Best Buy and, like, picked up a, a PlayStation, and I was just like, yeah! And like we got probably the first in the first gen uh, DualShock, and um, we picked up like Tekken three for it. I remember, and I was just like, yeah. But um, pretty much as soon as that happened, I was just because Final Fantasy seven, I believe, had come out the previous year, and I really wanted to play it, but I didn't have a PlayStation, so we're like, no. And um, so I finally picked up. You know, we finally picked up Final Fantasy seven, and it's really it's so funny to go back and play that game now because the graphics are so like archaic and blocky um even like the cg sequences and stuff but like when i first i remember i nearly shat my pants when i saw that first fmv with like the train going through midgar and stuff and eris and like the live stream and shit i was like <gasps> <laughs> like I was I was having like cognitive problems. I was so blown away by it. Um, but the funny thing is is that I'm a huge Final Fantasy VI fan. And I mentioned this in some in my uh, my potion video that I made like f over like almost four years ago that I was never a huge fan of seven. Um, I was never and I really never was. Um, until recently, and, and this this is a long story. Um, I was never a real big fan of Seven. I mean, I understand that it opened up, you know, RPGs to a, a much wider audience, but I was kind of like, you know, oh, you know, Final Fantasy should stay with, you know, the the sort of medieval fantasy genre. Oh, I was really elitist about that. My brother was too, and we're like, we only like, you know, Final Fantasy four and six. Um, so it took me years to even really appreciate Seven. Um, you know, I played it again at the end of high school, and I was like, meh. And then I played it again when I was a university student, and I was like, oh, okay, I understand. I think it is, the thing is, is when I was 14 and I, I played that game the first time, I don't think I really understood a lot of the, uh, the undertones and nuances of that game. Um, the last and the thing is the last time I played Final Fantasy seven I started it in the beginning of March two thousand eleven and then we had the huge disaster here and I was playing through that game and as all of the Tepco bullshit started unfolding I started to draw 
parallels in that game. Um, Shinra, like honestly, if you look at it, Shinra and Tepco, it makes me wonder if uh, the developers were not making a social commentary at that time. Uh, because it was, TEPCO was so closely, um, as we understood, was so closely tied to the government. Um, so as I played through that game, actually just last, just last year, which is, you know, after I made that potion video, I started to really appreciate the message of that game. Um, and, yeah. Like, I mean, a lot of people could argue with me, but I, I would say, like, I think a lot of the, the Mako power and stuff was sort of, uh, you know, a message about nuclear power. Um, but, uh, I don't, I don't know. Or maybe, you know, maybe it's just something you had to experience the whole disaster to really get a feel for. I, I don't know. Did anybody else feel that way? Hey. But, uh, anyway. So I, you know, I was really glad to have a PlayStation because then I, because I was, I was a huge Square fan, like, and they did a lot of like, they did a lot of interesting games, like, um, God, what's the name, um, that fighting, gosh, Bushido, Bushido Blade. Uh, I purchased both of both of the uh, Bushido Blades, and I thought that was a really cool, like, idea, um, for the time to have that completely open area for a fighting game and I was like, hey, that's really cool And I I completely just kind of threw out Nintendo at that point because I was just like I don't even care about Nintendo anymore um, Because I the games on the N64 compared to what was coming up for PlayStation for me Was just not very impressive um, Until Conker's Bad Fur Day came out Nintendo seemed to be still embracing that kind of kid-friendly family-friendly image um, and I was, and I was growing up, um, so I didn't really, you know, see that. Um, some game, you know, obviously, I loved it when they went back and revamped Final Fantasy four, or yeah, four, five, and six, um, and they gave us five as an official release. And now I played on an emulator before, um, but to see like the official translations and stuff, that was really cool. Um, and to see that they were not kind of like Wooslyisms, like, you know, Spoonie Bard. They actually went ahead and under Sony they can do that kind of stuff. And I was just like, hey, that's cool. Um, some of my favorite PlayStation games are, uh, I would say Final Fantasy IX. Vagrant Story? Hell yeah, Vagrant Story. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm a huge tactics fan. Uh, um, Jammer Lammy, uh, Thousand Arms, if you have not played Thousand Arms, get your ass over to somewhere and play that game. Um, it is awesome. Um, and I'm trying to think of the other huge PlayStation games. I never got into Resident Evil Biohazard, I never really have, so I, I have Resident Evil 2, but I, because it had the tank controls, I'm just not coordinated with it, it was not an enjoyable experience for me, so I never really played it. Um, you know, I have it, but I didn't. I played it, I sold it, whatever. Um, there are a lot of games, actually, Parasite Eve and stuff, I did enjoy, but I ended up selling them, um, just kind of needed money, like, uh, and also, PlayStation, when that system came out, it was sort of a revolution because it lowered the price of games like woes. Um, you know, you were paying, like, 70 bucks a cartridge for new, uh, Nintendo 64 games, whereas a new PlayStation game would range around 50 bucks, but you know, you could immediately buy it used from, for 10 to 20 bucks. And when I was 15, I started, uh, working and I, like pretty much all of my part-time job money, I, I, you know, I went to GameStop or whatever, and I always buy, I always bought some kind of, uh, used game. And, uh, this is really embarrassing. This funny thing is the oldest, the game that I have had the longest that I have bought and I have not completed is Breath of Fire 3. And here's the thing, I bought Breath of Fire 3 around the time it was released, and it is 2012, I still have not finished that game. I think it's like you get to some tower after you get Momo in your party, and something was really confusing, and it was really before GameFAQs.com came about, and I was just like, fuck this. So, you know, I just kind of threw it aside. But I, I really, I need to, I need to finish that game, because I've, 
I've played every other Breath of Fire game except that one all the way through. And I'm a big, I, I'm a big Breath of Fire fan. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah, I love Up Jammer Lemme! That's actually one of my super favorite games. Um, actually, I have this, uh, uh, huge binder full of just disc games that I have, and I'm just gonna flip through these and see which ones I like the absolute best. Let's see, I already mentioned some of these, because I, I just don't want to forget any. Um, Yo-Yo, I mentioned Vagrant Story, I mentioned Final Fantasy IX, and let's see, what other PlayStation games that I really freaking loved? I got a lot of PS2 games in here, too. Chrono Cross! Chrono Cross. If you're a fan of Chrono Trigger, and you play Chrono Cross, Play it till the end, because you won't see the connections till the end. But freaking play it! And there's an awesome website, um, the, I think this, I believe it's called the chronocompendium.com, and it is the most amazing fan site for the Chrono series in the entire world. Oh my god, Chrono Cross. Play it. Jesus Christ, Chrono Cross. And I'm looking through, you know, I played, I played uh, Saga Frontier, but I never really got into it because it was, it was open, but it was a little too open and it got really weird at the end. So I was just like, ah, I didn't get it. Silent Hill. Hello. Love Silent Hill. That's the one game with the tank controls. I did actually mention to get through Rhapsody. Rhapsody. I think um, this is available for Nintendo DS, but this game, if you like something kind of, yeah, kind of childish and cute and fairy tale-ish, but like Final Fantasy Tactics, but like instead of like uh, killing people with swords, you kill people with pancakes, uh, you will enjoy it. And my, this is, Rhapsody is a, uh, m you can see, a musical, a adventure. Um, I'll be the first to admit, even though it's embarrassing, that I have, I seriously enjoyed Rhapsody's soundtrack. I love its soundtrack. It's so corny, but I love it. I have not played the first two Suikoden games because I'm lame. I also did not enjoy Legend of Mana. I love Seiken Densetsu, like the first three. Did not enjoy Legend of Mana. I also did not, well, that's another game. That's, that's next gen. Let's not talk about that now. But uh, I did not enjoy that game. I had it, and I got halfway through it, and I was like, this sucks, and I sold it. Maybe when I'm older I can appreciate it, but I'm just not yet. Yeah, and that's it. Those are the big ones I want to mention. And since this is like 20 minutes, I gotta stop. But I gotta say, PlayStation like changed my life, and I've been a PlayStation co ever since then. I got Sony products all over the place, because I love Sony. Um, I'm going to stop it here because this is an extremely long video and if you have watched this far you either must love the tone of my voice or you must be really bored, but kudos to you.